Hello, friends, and welcome back to Mindset Rx. I'm your host, Dr. Robin McKay, and this is, as you know, your place to be if you're an emotionally intelligent leader and you're ready to set the tone for a positive, productive, and purposeful life. And today is May 24th, 2022. This is the last episode of Mindset Rx for LinkedIn Live and our sister podcast, Mindset Rx, wherever you find podcasts. We are going on hiatus for the summer. We will be back in in August. I think it's August 24th. It's like almost exactly three months from, from right now. So yay, celebrating that we've made it through five months of 2022, getting ready for the summer holidays in the Northern Hemisphere anyway. And I was talking to a couple of my private clients recently about what their summer plans are. And they asked me, they, they specifically asked, how do you prepare for the summer? I think that it's really important to answer that question because when we were in school, I want you to think about that for yourself. When you're in school, school gets out and then there's a summer vacation. You can do whatever you want. You can sleep late if you want to. You can go out to the lake with friends. You can stay out later. You can watch movies. You can do all of these things. There's this feeling of freedom when you're a kid anyway, for not everybody, but for a lot of people would describe summers like that. And then we grow up and go to work and take on adult responsibilities. And suddenly summer is just another season. You're still working. You're still doing all the things. And yet there's still kind of the calling in your heart to do something different, to make it special. Recently, as I was preparing for my own summer, I was thinking about one of my favorite summers, which was in the summer of, it was between my the end of my PhD and the beginning of my postdoc. I had sold my house in Kansas and I was staying with my mentor from grad school, Barb, who she and I co-authored, Smart Girls in the 21st Century, staying on her farm for five months between the time I was finishing my PhD and going on my postdoc. And those five months were just so precious to me for a lot of different reasons. But the, the months that really stay really close in my memory are the summer months. We called it that summer feeling. And there's a song, I forget who the author is on that, or the, the singer is on that song. It's called That Summer Feeling. You can go to YouTube, Jonathan Summerfield or something. Anyway. If you want to hear that summer feeling, it's a song from probably the 1960s. And it just is this really sweet acoustic guitar, sweet voice. And it tells a story about the summer feeling. And that was our anthem that summer, that summer feeling. And we'd sit out on the porch and listen to the crickets and hear the owls and the coyotes and drink wine and think about things that we wanted to do and talk about ideas and imagine what's possible in the future. And then we would go to bed and wake up in the morning and do our chores and do our writing or whatever work we had. And then we would do the same thing that evening. So our days were really segmented into the mornings to, to work because we still had to work. I was still doing my, my internship and she was at, you know, at the university. So we still had stuff going on during the day. It wasn't like we were, it wasn't like a vacation, but toward the end of every day, there was just, you could feel a palpable shift in the consciousness on the farm where we stayed. And it went from work to that summer feeling. So I want to share that with you because that, that is something that I just keep really close in my heart when I think about summer and I think it's really important now as the world is emerging from the pandemic and while we know that there are still going to be challenges and uncertainties and so on that are going on in our lives and in the world, I really want us as emotionally intelligent, intuitive, smart leaders to set a tone here for this next season of our lives. I think it's become even more important now than ever before to do so rather than waiting, reacting, waiting for someone else to tell us what to do, to actually set the tone and be very intentional on what you want to do with your summer, how you want to be in your summer. 
Because the last thing I think any of us want at this point from an existential perspective, from a purpose perspective, from a just a human perspective is to lose time. We don't want to lose any more time. There's no time to waste. And so in this time that we have this summer, I want us to really start thinking about right now, how do I want to feel by the end of the summer? What's that summer feeling that I want to cultivate, that I want to bask in over the course of the next three months? So that's one of the things that I do as I'm preparing for my own summer. I'm thinking about the clients I'll be working with. I'm thinking about the time we're going to be spending away from home. We It gets really hot here in the Valley in Phoenix. So we spend some time away working and living and playing, but just away from the heat. And I just don't want to get lost in the minutia of it. And I don't want to get lost in the, the daily stressors. I want to savor this time. I want to create another version of that summer feeling, only this time, all these years later. And I think that it's important to right now, as you're, as you're listening to this podcast today or um, whenever you're listening to it, to just take a little bit of time and reflect on your favorite summer up to this point. When was it? What was going on? How old were you? What were the things that you remembered the most about it? And rather than looking back with a sense of longing or wishing, just be in curiosity about what's possible this summer. How do you want to spend this summer? And as you project yourself into the future, as you use your imagination to consider all the possibilities, you can also at this moment turn your attention to the past, to looking at the last five months of your life from January 1st until right now. And kind of ask the same thing. How did I in January want to spend my year? I have a wall calendar just right. It's in my, my, the line of my eye right now as I'm looking off screen. And on top of that, at the beginning of the year, I wrote this word expand. I want to feel expansive this year. And it's not to assess, right? How well I did or to judge how well I did or didn't do with expansion. Although I would say I'd give myself probably a B plus for expansion, which is fine. It's just fine. There's more that I can do to expand, but, um, it kind of made me wonder if I need to reassess that, if there's something that I need to do differently for the next season of our year between May and the end of August. I don't know. I'm going to have to sort that through too as I head into the summer holidays. But we can look at this year as a kind of a reawakening, kind of coming out of the, the, um, the pandemic. People are headed back into the office. There's some still some COVID cocoon stuff going on with people. Not, I haven't heard much about in the last couple of weeks, but I do know even just a month ago, there was some sense of just wanting to still hunker down and keep things the way that they, the, the way that they were. Um, but using this time as an opportunity to shift gears, to do your work, but to do it in a kinder, gentler way for yourself. I talk a lot about recalibrating your relationship with time, work, and money. And I continue to think that that is a key to actualizing your potential, a key to tapping into the level of influence that you want to have in your work, in your life, and so on. I really do think that. But what I would say about all of those, those three things, time, money, and work, is that it's not going to come from the intellect. The shift is not going to come from thinking it, thinking about it. It's going to come from doing something differently. It's going to come from your intuition. It's going to come from engaging in life in a new way, taking yourself off of autopilot, doing kind of a pattern interrupt with your life. I think I started my summer this, this morning, actually. I know I did. It wasn't quite intentional, but as I'm looking back, I'm like, 
I actually did do a couple of things differently this morning. Usually I'm up about 7.15. I get Cooper, our golden doodle, out of his crate. I get dressed. I say hello to him. I say hello to my husband. I pour a cup of coffee. I take Cooper for a walk. And this morning, nothing wrong with that routine. Then I had to work after that. There's nothing wrong with that routine, but it's a routine. And in order to do a pattern interrupt for myself on my routines. This morning, I woke up earlier. I woke up about 6.45. And rather than sometimes I just lay there and snooze and kind of just enjoy savoring the last, the vestiges of my sleep from the night before. But this morning, I actually got up. I said my prayers. I did my meditations, did some stretching before I let Cooper, before I got Cooper out of his crate. And I just had this really quiet time with myself and, and with God and had some conversations with my, with my intuition. And it really just felt good to do something different. So I think that that's one way that we can start summer is to start doing something different. You don't have to join the 5 a.m. club. I think that there's limited value in that actually for a lot of people. I think that gets over, over marketed, frankly. But even if you just shift and get up five minutes early or 10 minutes early and do something different than you normally would, if you normally get out of bed with the right foot, maybe get out of bed with your left foot first. Just something as simple as that can be a pattern interrupt, shifting your consciousness, bringing you back into your mindful awareness of the present moment. So you can really truly be in your life, rather than skimming along the surface of it, rather than sleepwalking your way through life, which a lot of a lot of talented people do simply because they're so exhausted. But when your spirit, when your soul calls you back online, you know, you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, you just haven't experienced it yet. But when there's a calling in your heart to come online, There is an urge inside of you to do something different. If you're listening intently to this saying, what can I do differently? Then it's probably time to do something differently. Unfortunately, so many of us fight the status quo. It's very easy to just fall back into old habits. Certainly, I know that to be the case. I can't tell you for how long I worked out with my trainer three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon, maybe a couple of years. Every month, like clockwork, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 12 to 1. And I don't know, a couple months ago, I was like, can we change times? And he's like, yeah, we only changed by an hour. But that hour makes such a difference in my day. It doesn't break up my day so much. Like I have a whole, I have a whole another hour to do the things I want to do, to be at home, to write, to coach, to connect, just changes the tone of the day. So those are a couple of things you can think about as you're changing the tone for your day and setting the tone for your summer. And then the other thing I do when I'm thinking about my summer, you know, I think about the the places that we're going to go, where we're going to go on vacation or where we're going to spend some time outside of the 9,000 degrees in Phoenix this summer. And We go to Southern California. We've got a place that we stay at um, and have for years. It's part of our kind of our summer ritual is to get out of the desert for a little while every summer. And um, so you can think about those, the details of them. But I would say if you were just to tune in and feel into what it feels like on August 20, I'm looking at my calendar, August 23rd is when I come back with the next season of Mindset Rx. So if you could think about rejoining me on August 23rd to listen to episode one of season two of Mindset Rx, how are you gonna be different? How do you want to be different? How do you want to feel? As I imagine that, I think I want to feel refreshed I want to feel 
focused. I want to feel excited. I want to feel rejuvenated. And I want to feel really, truly on purpose. Like I've, maybe you can get this feeling, locked into my true north. That I've done some inner work this summer that has created the conditions for me to really, truly be locked into my purpose. Not in a servitude way at all, but just in a very focused, determined, poised I've got this kind of energy. That's that's how I want to feel. How do you want to feel when we circle back, when we reconvene on August 23rd? I think that's a really good question to ask. How do you want to feel? And the other way you can ask that is how do I want to be different? So maybe you don't want to feel so crunchy or so stressed. Maybe Maybe you're starting a summer exercise program or a clean eating program. Maybe you've decided to shift your diet from meat to pescatarian, from carnivore to pescatarian. I don't know. I did that a couple of years ago. How do you want to how do you want to be different? And then another question that occurs to me that we can ask ourselves about this summer is what do I want to learn? I believe everybody has a right to learn something new every day. And in fact, what I know about smart people is that when we don't learn something new every day, we get bored. So what do you want to practice? What's something that you want to learn every day? I have a couple things in mind for that. I always say that my French is terrible because it's terrible. And I have very little excuse at this point to allow that to be the case. I have a dear friend. She takes care of Cooper. She's a French teacher. She's from France. She offers French lessons and tutoring. So I think that's something I'll consider for the summer. What about you? What are you going to learn this summer? So what did we ask? How do I want to feel? How do I want to be different? What do I want to learn? And let's see if there's anything else I want to ask about summer. What do I want to create? What do I want to create? And if create doesn't work for you, you can ask, what do I want to contribute? Or what do I want to master this summer? Do I want to master my mindset? Do I want to master a new skill? What do I want to master? And then there's a couple fun ones. So I don't know if... I'm totally nerdy, so just bear with me. But we all know that about me. I'm, yeah, I wrote the book Smart Girls. Like, what do you expect? But when I was a kid, every summer, when I was in elementary school, my friend Angel and I would practice our handwriting. And we would make decisions about how we wanted our handwriting to be for the new school year. You know, how did I want to write my name? How did I want to change the script of my R? Like all of these like nuanced things. I don't know where we came up with those things, except it was just imprinted in my spirit as something that was important to me. Maybe I, so I could tell you the story today. I don't know, but I love doing that. And I would look at like, how do I want to wear my hair this year? What kind of clothes do I want to wear? So I used, this was when I was like 10, so I use the summer as kind of as an existential moment to really assess like what's going on in my life and how, how do I want to shift things? What do I want to wear? How, who do I want to be? How do I want to show up? And so I think we can ask ourselves as adults that as well. And we can just ask questions like, how do I want to wear my hair this summer? 
I got some new, I got in trouble. My hairstylist was like, Robin, your hair is breaking. Like I wear, I used to wear my hair in a ponytail all day, every day. And I came in last time and she's like, you should have seen her. She was like beside herself. She was so worried about my hair and she gave me special oil for it because my hair is breaking. So I bought some new clippies. If you're watching the YouTube, oh, I guess you can't really see them. But anyway, I bought some new clippies and I've got my hair set up differently. And I was like, I kind of like this. I kind of like it summertime and I'm going to have a different kind of hairstyle. What I'm going to do with my hair on a daily basis is going to be a little bit different than it has been in the past. It might seem superficial, but I always like to look at hair, clothes, makeup for women. Well, for people who like hair, clothes and makeup, it doesn't have to be women. Um, as an expression of yourself and as, a, as an expression of your spirit. What kind of lip gloss do you want to wear? What kind of flip flops are you going to wear this summer? I have these little cotton skirts and tank tops that I love. I got them last summer. They're going to continue to be part of my wardrobe for sure. And then maybe I can let go of some things too that are no longer really fitting with my style or fitting with who I am now. Maybe I can just let go of those. In fact, I have a whole bag of old workout clothes in my, in my car ready to go to the Goodwill. Just done with them. Bless them and release them. So I see this summer for all of us. If you're tuned into this, I see it as an opportunity to do some shedding of layers. Some things that fit you a year ago or two years ago or five years ago just may not fit anymore. I don't mean physically. I just mean fit your personality, fit your frequency, fit who you are now. They're no longer an expression of your highest potential. So there's some shedding that's going to happen this summer. And there's also this uh, recognition that you're not for everybody. You're not Nutella. Not everybody's going to like you. And it turns out not everybody even likes Nutella, shockingly. But the idea here is beyond anything else, beyond the details. The idea here is pay attention Lean into your life, lean into who you are. Even if it doesn't feel great. And probably that's, an, that's the most important time to lean into your life is when it doesn't feel great. Because there's so much to be learned and so much to shift when something uncomfortable comes up. It's not a bad thing, it just is coming up for healing, for transformation for awareness for you. When you become aware of something, you can do something about it. When you become aware of something painful, the pain shifts just by virtue of you being aware of it. I like to think about this summer as a summer of becoming even more of ourselves, of bringing our whole best selves into our lives. You know, this has been a big topic of conversation and a big initiative among the diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging community in corporate spaces, especially. And I think it is so important to encourage people and invite people to bring their best selves or their, their whole selves to work. And I think about emotionally intelligent people. I think about intuitive people and about how we've shielded our emotions and our intuitions from the workspace. And I have to wonder if this is the best time, and I think it is the best time for, for those of us who are intuitive, who are emotionally intelligent, to allow ourselves to take a cue and say, I'm bringing my whole best self to work too. And my whole best self is intuitive, or my whole best self is really in tune with emotions, even if you're not, mine is. And to accept that invitation ourselves as well. And perhaps that's the major theme of the thumber, theme of the thumber, did you hear me? <laughs> that makes me giggle. Um, 
I think that that's the theme this summer is bring your whole best self. What is your best self and what part of yourself are you leaving out of the conversation? What part of yourself are you shielding, protecting? What part of yourself are you thinking it's too much? I'm too much. People will think I'm weird. People will think I'm crazy. People will think, well, we've reached a time in the world where now more than ever before, there's an invitation to bring your whole best self to work. I don't have blue hair. I did have streaks of red in my hair when I was in biotech when I was like 24 or something. That did not go over well, by the way, in my buttoned up corporate job. But I did it anyway. It was kind of a mistake, actually. It was my colorist made a mistake on the color, but oh well, I showed up anyway. And it's a little bit beside the point, but I would say that we, I think we owe it to ourselves and we owe it to our communities, to the people that we're leading, to the people who are counting on us to show up as our best selves with no pressure, but just don't hide your best self anymore. And I think this could be the summer of that. The golden summer can be the summer of bringing your best self to all that you do. And that's what I'm going to promise you, my beloved community, is that I'm going to bring my best self to this podcast and to my social media and to all of the work that I do. I'm not leave anything out. Even if it feels weird to you, um, I'm an intuitive smart girl. I have a background in science and corporate and in tech. I work with engineers and scientists and physicians and so on. You all know this. My secret sauce, my the thing that my is my best self is my intuition. That's my gift. And for a really long time in the corporate space, I felt like I had to hide that because it was too much. People weren't ready for that. People are not ready for talking about intuition yet, especially in tech. Well, I'm going to disagree with that. There may be some people who are never ready to talk about intuition in the workplace, to be honest. That's okay. There are, there are going to be some people, many people who are not ready to talk even about emotions in the workplace. And that just tells us more about where they are with their own emotional intelligence than anything else. But my idea for this summer really is about allowing ourselves to be unbridled and unapologetic in who we are, not to come in and rattle cages and you know, make waves and everything, but just to bring your whole self, because that's when so many dynamic, beautiful, amazing experiences happen. That's when solutions come forward. When you bring your whole best self, even if other people choose not to, even if other people are going to think you're weird, you know, LinkedIn, I really like LinkedIn for a lot of reasons. And there was, because there's such a diverse perspective. There's so many different perspectives, especially on what it means to bring your best self or bring your whole self to work. And there was a black woman who came on. It's a beautiful story. She published a post. I don't know, it's been in the last week about how she did a job interview wearing her cornrows. She had just had her hair done. And she said her whole family was so nervous for her to go into these job interviews because she was wearing her hair in a way that she felt most comfortable with. And yet it was a way that the majority culture in the past in organizations would create, you know, would, would make them think that she did, wasn't professional or something like that. Whatever stories that they would tell her, her whole family was worried about it. She ended up getting the job. She said that the people didn't blink at her hair, whatever. It was a great story. So I share this with you because there's an edge, right, to all of us, whether it's the way that you wear your hair. And I know that everybody has a different relationship with privilege and power, and there's a distance from privilege and power. So I want to be mindful of saying that too, but we all have something, either an, a visible or an invisible difference that we have a tendency to hide or to not be at, for those of us who have invisible differences, 
like ADHD or like intuition, for example, even I can hide that pretty well and I can frame things pretty well. The woman who I was referring to is black every single day of her life. And so those overt differences are things that I think are greater, can be a greater difficulty with bringing your whole self to work. But there is something about self-acceptance in there and just being comfortable in your own skin that is such a gift. And that is my encouragement as I'm having this conversation with all of you today. So how do I prepare for the summer? One of the things that I do is talk to you all. I talk it through with you about what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, how I'm shifting myself. And maybe you can pick up on a cue or two. And I'd love to hear from you. If something that has landed for you today that you want to try for yourself or you want to riff on yourself this summer, let me know. Post a comment. If you're watching on LinkedIn, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on the podcast, take a screenshot, share it with your community, tag me in your posts so I can see what inspired you and how you're spending your summer. How do you want to be this summer as you create your own version of the golden summer? So with that, I'm going to close out for today. It's been my joy to be here with you. I have loved these months that I've been coming into LinkedIn to do these lives and, and then publishing them on YouTube and on the podcast. I'm looking forward to creating new content for you starting on August 23rd. So I will see you back here then. And I can't wait to continue this conversation. I think that'll be a great thread, a great arc from the beginning of summer to the end of summer. Until next time, I'm Dr. Robin McKay, your host, and I will see you in the actualization zone on Facebook. If you're not a member of that, head on over there. You can type the actualization zone into the search bar and that group will come right up. There are a couple of questions to answer and we will be happy to have you join us over there for the summer. Until August, big love to everybody.